here we have a QS13890H motor. And this motor is damaged. And as you can see, there was a fire. And the reason for the fire was actually just egregious negligence in terms of quality control on the part of the vendor who sold this motor. Basically, they crimped these lugs directly onto the enamel covered phase wires, which you know, heated up the phase wires and caused the fire. If you want more information on this, I have that video on my channel explaining the problem here. But today, what I wanna do is, since this motor is damaged, I wanna take this motor apart and we can have a look inside the QS 13890H motor. I'm curious to see how everything is configured and set up. Um, I do want to see what type of damage this caused and also maybe gain some insight about possibly repairing it. I know what I'll have to do is essentially rewind the motor somehow, which I've never done, but it will be interesting to see what we're working with. But the first thing we need to do is remove this bolt. So this needs to be secured somehow. So what I'm gonna do is use one of these clamp wrenches to hold the shaft in place over here. That way that's gonna prevent it from turning. And I can just hopefully use this. There you go. And that loosens that. So now that we have the nut off of the shaft, we have to pull the sprocket off somehow. And this is lodged on there pretty well because this shaft is actually um, tapered. It's not a straight shaft, so can't really pull this off. So what we need to do is use one of these uh, puller tools. So this goes right here. This attaches to the center, and then we can place these arms around the sprocket and then start tightening it down. All right. So there you have it. That is the shaft on this motor. On this side, you can see there's a slot for this kind of U-shaped sprocket key. That goes right here. And then, of course, that lines up with a sprocket like that. So now we can begin removing some of these screws. And for that, we're gonna need one of these, uh, I don't know what these are called, these types of bits. These are M6 screws. Looks like they are about 24 millimeters in length. And next I have a screwdriver and a rubber mallet. Let's see if I can kind of like knock this up a little bit. Ah, so that did it. Come around to this side, hammer it out a little bit. There you go. All right, that really loosened it. So that's the face. You can see the bearing here. Let's remove this bearing first. If you ever need to replace one of these bearings, it's one of these 6005RZ01A02. These are pretty widely available on Amazon. Here we can see the charred windings from the fire. And you can see that there's pretty much bare exposed copper here from where the enamel burned off. And you can see how that's just directly shorting here. And I guess it was here as well. So each one of these coils pertains to each of the phases. So if that's you, you know, if that's, let's say this one, then this one would be one of the other two. And then that one would be the other. So all three phases are shorted in this case, as you can see, and maybe in other places as well. Right away, we can make some assumptions about the design of the stator. You can see that this is a 12 slot stator design. And the winding has a pitch of one, meaning that each coil is wrapped between two adjacent slots. So you can see the coils are coming out of this slot here and then right back into the next slot. That coil comes out of here and then right back into the next and then right back into the next. This is called a concentrated winding as opposed to a distributed winding where a single coil may be wrapped across multiple slots. 
The advantages of a concentrated winding are more torque at lower speeds, they're cheaper to produce, and it optimizes the motor for electronically commentated DC as opposed to sinusoidal AC. The disadvantages are less efficiency and more torque ripple and electrical noise. Since this is a three phase motor with 12 slots, we know that there are four coils per phase. And because this is a concentrated winding, the phase coils are distributed across the stator like this. This type of winding produces a four pole rotating magnetic field or RMF. If you were to unfold the stator as a flat surface, the windings for each phase would look like this. This assumes a delta configuration, but we'll have to take a look at the stator from the other side to make sure. I should note that when you look at the specs for this motor, it mentions that it has five pole pairs, but this is referring to the poles in the rotor. But if you're using a far driver controller, the app will say that this motor has four pole pairs. This is referring to the RMF in the stator, as opposed to the five pole pairs in the rotor. But even this is technically wrong. If this motor has four pole pairs, that would imply an eight pole RMF. But we can see from the stator design and windings that it produces a four pole RMF. So basically it's a typo in the far driver app. The RMF has four poles, not four pole pairs. Okay, so next let's remove the back face of the motor and see if we can actually remove the rotor from the stator so that we can inspect those two more closely. It's like these are M4 screws, by the way. So with this back piece, if you look closely, there are some wires that are connected to that back face plate. It's probably the hull sensor. So when it starts to rotate, it's not really supposed to rotate in relation to the stator. So when you start rotating it, it starts really pulling those wires around that shaft. So you gotta be careful if you're taking these apart not to try rotating this too much. Okay, so here I've managed to push the rotor out a little bit out of the stator, and now you can kind of see where those hull sensor wires are being passed, and then the, this red and black wires to power the hull sensor, I suppose. So that is housed in this assembly here. So it's this little piece right up front, and you know, there were some bolts here that I removed. Obviously this comes off, but I can't really get to it. So here I have a razor blade and I figured I can get into these little wedges a little bit better with a razor blade to hopefully loosen some of the sealant that was used here and then hopefully pry this thing open a little bit easier. Figure that would happen. And here you can see the hall sensor. These are the two wires powering the hall sensor. And then here you have some sealant and the connector. So if I remove the sealant, I should be able to just unplug the connector and pass the wires through. So that is the hull sensor harness, and I would just need to desolder these two. Okay, so now I could just pass these through. I just pull these out of here. And then now I should be able to just push this stator out without damaging these wires. Every time it gets kind of further out, the magnetic force starts to kind of pull it back in because I have this separated from the wires. I can at least knock this off the bearing.
There was also a screw that I didn't notice before that I took out early, I didn't film it. But that goes in here. There's a little spacer in there and that screws in to the top over here. So you need to remove this screw underneath the hall sensor if you're going to take this face off. This is a different bearing than the one in the front. So this is the front face with the shaft and this is the rear face where the hall sensor is. I'm gonna to have to come up with some other method. The solution I came up with to separate the rotor from the stator is to use some scrap metal that I had laying around and cut some six millimeter holes in there. And then these could be used as an anchor point for one of these puller tools. So instead of a puller tool, it becomes a pusher tool to push the stator out from the other side. Now we can take a look at the rotor. You can see each of the magnets embedded into the iron core is arranged in kind of a star pattern, sort of a zigzag around the edge. And the rotor itself is made up of layers of this, these iron sheets. I made a marking here to indicate one of the poles. And what we can do is observe the magnetic field lines by taking a magnet and kind of holding it up to this pole. Let's call that north. And then as we spin the rotor, we can see the magnetic field lines switching to south. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and 10 poles. So once again, in the rotor, you have 10 poles and five pole pairs. Now that we have the rotor removed, we can take a look at the stator from the other side. And here you can see the phase wires, you know, obviously they're extensions of the coils inside the motor. I can see this one coming in here and looping around and here's the middle one and the other one the two wires that were powering the hall sensor. I'm not sure where they come from. Let's undo some of the wrapping here and we'll take a look at the winding some more. I think the next step is gonna to be to basically undo this. What I noticed is that this piece is held on with these like little hooks so if I could get those out of the way, I think I can kind of like pop that piece off and that would probably allow me to kind of lift this up maybe. All right, so the phase wires are pretty easy to dislodge. So then we can kind of lift them up and, oh well, yeah, I guess I'm gonna just cut them. Okay, now we have this pulled apart a little bit and we can take at the windings on this motor a little bit more closely. One thing I noticed is that the splice points where the coils are spliced together, these splice together three different coils. So they're coming from three places. This one's coming from here, then another one coming from there, and then another one coming from here. And same with this one. You have one coil coming from this side, going in there, and then you have another one coming from here, and then you have another side aspect that's going in back there to that slot. So these splice points are splicing together three different coils, which I believe implies a star configuration for this winding, not a delta like I showed earlier. But also we can see that these phase lines are splitting into two different pieces. So you have this phase wire, and then it's splitting off over here. One side is going into the slot here, and then the other side is going into the slot right here. And these sl slots are opposite to each other. 
And same thing for this line. We have one piece going in here and the other piece going right down there. Again, a slot opposite to each other. And then same over here. So this is going here and there. So that actually lends evidence to the winding that I showed earlier where the phases are distributed alternatingly in each of the slots. Here I've removed a heat shrink on one of those splice points and you can see that the three coils going into it are twisted together then filled with solder and spliced together. This is actually the way the terminal lug should have been done. So the phase lines at the terminals, if they were correctly twisted and then soldered this way, then the terminal lugs fitted on top of here, this motor wouldn't have burned. So it, actually this is the correct way to prepare these phase wires for having the lugs pressed on. Now what I'd like to do is cut some of these coils and I'd like to cut them flush to the stator slots. So that way I can pull the coils out from the other side. Okay, so I've removed the coils from this side of the motor as best as I could. Next, I want to actually pull these windings out of the stator. I tried to pull them out from this side, kind of just pulling on the windings here, but it, that's not going to work out. So what I figured I'd try to do is actually try to push them out a little bit. So I'm going to use, you know, something like this, just kind of put this over one of these windings or, you know, find something similar and just try to bang on it with a rubber hammer. So let's see how that goes. And there you have it. There is the winding, all of the coils, and then we have the stator here with the coils removed. In the stator, you can see the paper wrapping that the coils are covered in when they're going in the stator to protect them and further insulate them. Then you can see how the stator slots are comprised of small layers of this iron laminate. I think that's what it's called, laminate. And then of course, the, this is the area where the three coils that experienced the most heating and burning was. So you can see that under here, the laminate is kind of deformed due to the heat on this side and charred. So I don't even know if this stator is um, roadworthy. If I were to rewind this, that it would be okay to do. I'm sure it'd be for the most part okay because this is still metal. I don't know what effect significant heating would have on these iron laminates, whether it would to some degree lessen their ability to conduct magnetic flux. So I don't know if I'm gonna try to rewire this motor. Although I do have a good idea of how to wind the motor in theory, in practice, I don't know if I can managed to shove all of those coils into those slots. I don't know how they do this at the factory. I'm sure there's some machine that does it. It's probably not somebody doing it by hand. Nevertheless, I'm sure it's possible, but I'm not sure if it's something that I wanna do considering this stator was damaged by a fire. So maybe I'll just keep it as, a, as an art piece, you know? Maybe I'll put some soil in here and grow a plant inside the stator. Huh?
Now that's a good idea. Sell that on Etsy. Guys, follow me on my Etsy store, at Gaius Gardening. I almost forgot, here are those two red and black wires that were going to the hall sensor that I said was powering the hall sensor. Doesn't seem like it's powering them, but what are they doing? So they're, look here it looks like they're shorted together. So if you pull these out, those are the two red and black wires. So now let me remove this heat shrink and we'll see what they're actually doing. If they're just connected, maybe it's, I mean, what could this be? Yeah, so I took the insulation off those two wires and duh, this is the temperature sensor. How could I forget? That's the issue that I had with this motor to begin with. Specifically, this is the KTY-83 122 temperature sensor. They just wrap this in insulation and then it gets stuffed into one of the slots along with the coils. And there you have it. That is the entire QS 138 V3 motor completely disassembled. You have all the parts here. You've got the rotor, the stator, the two face plates, the hall sensor wire, whatever you call this thing, the bearings, the back hall sensor cover, the hall sensor itself, a screw, the phase wires, and the coil windings. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope it was informative uh, for those of you who are planning to do any repairs or modifications of this motor. I hope it gave you some insight into what you might expect. So if you like this type of content, please let me know in the comments. Please like this video and please subscribe. I'm going to post a lot more videos like this soon. And uh, thanks a lot for watching.